Hi everybody, I'm Melinda Gallant and I want to welcome you to another Cape Conversations. I cannot believe that I am standing in front of Johnny Depp. Yes, I am so close to him. He was in this at one time. He's not now, but he was, and it's right here in Sandwich. So come along and let's have another Cape Conversation. Hi everyone, well I am sitting with really one of the smartest women I know in Sandwich. Um, I would say on Cape Cod, but I don't know that for sure. <laughs> but she certainly is one of the nicest and she is the executive director of a fabulous, fabulous place here in Sandwich called Heritage Museums and Gardens. Welcome, Ellen Spear. Welcome to you. I'm so glad you could be with us this summer and when we go Hollywood. Well, I am just so impressed. I am so totally impressed. I, we're sitting here amongst all these beautiful costumes. It is absolutely incredible. It absolutely. feels like the Academy Awards every time I walk through here. It's all of the, the greatest stars in really wonderful period roles and you begin to understand how the costume makes them better actors. That's what I love about it. Well, and tell me a little bit about that because I know every single costume has a story in here, but what are, just give us a snippet of what some of those stories sure. are. Sure. It's interesting. This, uh, there are 43 uh, costumes in this exhibit uh -huh. from all kinds of movies from all kinds of time periods right. and each one helps the actor become who they need to become. Mm -hmm. Whether um, it's one of the actresses talked about, um, you'll see a beautiful red ball gown that Lara mm. Flynn Boyle wore. And she said she was in tears the day she had to take it off. It just made her feel like a princess and the most beautiful woman in the world. <laughs> and, and it really affected her. She began to inhabit that role. Uh, there's another one where uh, Kira Knightley talks about, uh, we have several of her costumes from the Duchess, which are just over the top. Yeah. Over yeah. the top, with ermine and leather and all kinds of special embroidery. And she said it's so the corset was so tight and the way they had to put her into it is she couldn't go to the ladies' room the entire shoot. So she was in the costume for the day. And she said she just <laughs> learned that you don't drink water and right. you just deal with it. And you were going to be in that costume until they took it out. Oh my goodness. So. Well behind us are costumes from Phantom of the Opera. Yes, uh, Emmy Rossum, who is now on, on a TV series, right. wore this gorgeous confection. It's like every girls, little I girls know. dream. It looks like spun, um, you know, like spun sugar, yeah, you know? Yeah, cotton candy from, cotton the, candy, from the circus. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah, it is. It it's is beautiful. so beautiful. And in the exhibit, there are little film clips that go with it, too, so you can see the costume moving, and one of them, this Phantom of the Opera dress, is just so gorgeous that you see her waltzing a in it, and, and as it yeah. moves, it's just So how long is this exhibit here for? This will be here through the middle of October for the entire season. Oh, you're wonderful. Really people to enjoy it. Oh, that's It's the kind great. of thing that you can come back a couple of times because the detail, it, it works not only on the level of being an actor's um, helper, if you will, they're things that stars actually wore, uh, which is so exciting to me. I mean, we're sitting across from something that Uma Thurman wore, and I Nicole know. Kidman, and I'm, I'm looking over your shoulder and to see. And they're little tiny people. They are little tiny people. <laughs> and Daniel Craig. And for yes. me, you know, that's so exciting to see things that they actually wore and used. And then it, it, there are also works of art. I mean, when you get up close to oh, these sure. things, it's amazing to me that some How of these made. things, yeah, they're only in the movie for five seconds, some of these, but they're completely, completely done authentic to the period. Some of them have uh, authentic um, historical fabric put into them from the time period that they're from. Mm -hmm. So the care that goes into these works of art for, you know, less than a second really helps the movie transport you to another time and place. So if I were going to come see this exhibit, would it be fun to bring a little piece of paper and a pencil and write down what, what movies are here and then go back and try to Netflix them? Well, we have a handout for you. You do? So you'll be oh, able that's to wonderful. take a list of these movies because some of them I was not familiar with. Mm -hmm. uh, once we knew we were going to have this, I had never seen The Duchess before. And I was up late one night and all of a sudden it came on at like 11.30 on at night. On AMC or one Something, of those channels. Yeah. Yeah. And I watched it and I was blown away. It had won uh, for Best Costume and I paid a lot more attention this year in the Academy Awards <laughs> of course you did. to Best Costume. <laughs> and we have some that um, Jenny Bevins who won for Mad Max. Oh yeah. You know, all of those incredible sort of raggy things. Yeah. The most beautiful, elegant costumes that are in this exhibit that she designed really? for other movies. So her range is, is quite broad, but I'm paying more attention to that now. <laughs> 
I, I, I think you would. So what are people? What is you know? What are people saying? We've got a lot of people in here right now. Yes. So what are people saying about it? Are they are they enthused about it? Do they are they just loving it? They are loving it again on, on different levels. Women who sew, men who sew, are they get four inches. <laughs> <laughs> from, the, from the costume, gets us a little nervous. The, um, <laughs> but uh, they see the incredible work that goes into them. Right, and right. The as, as you said, the, the women are like tiny, yeah. and the heights of people are very deceptive. Nicole Kidman's very tall, she's 5'10. Right. And you look at this dress, and, and she doesn't look Right. appear to be that tall, yet others are, you know, four foot nine, tiny little people. Well, I would think that most of the men are probably tiny. They are. It's they're very short men. Yeah, short men seem to predominate the theater world and the uh, entertainment industry. With the exception of, of uh, Randy Quaid. We have right. a costume of his from Goya's right. Ghost, and right. he's six foot four. Right. And he wore padding in this, too, so you'll see a more rotund right. Randy Quaid than you're used to when you right. see this costume. Oh, that's amazing. So tell me, I mean, you have this beautiful exhibit. There's got to be other things going on here at Heritage. We have a Hollywood theme all summer, so our oh, family great. fun Fridays, uh -huh. every Friday in July and August, all have a theme based on one of the movies that's in the show. Oh, fun. So uh, we have a Sherlock Holmes uh, Family Fun Friday <laughs> where you, you get to uh, create a decoder ring and solve a mystery. Oh, there's fun. a Cinderella one. There's a Finding Neverland. There's a, uh, we're doing a Talk Like a Pirate Day. Oh, my gosh. You'll have 8 million little boys here. <laughs> so uh, there are those kinds of things. There's a couple right. of lectures uh, from folks at the Mass College of Art and Design who oh, are coming. wonderful. And they're going to talk about the history of costume design mm -hmm. and historic period costumes. Uh, and outside we have an outdoor exhibit of 10 contemporary artists work called Natural Threads. Get it? Yeah, it's I get it. I get it. The connection. I got it. I so, got it. So we're doing something that helps people connect the inside to the outside right. and to think about uh, those installations. So they all have kind of a fabric or a woven quality to mm -hmm. them. One of them, a woman artist who knits, and she's made kind of these bodices, knitted bodices for trees. So oh, you're going to see funny. them around, and there are other things that are up in the trees uh, that, that work in a variety of ways. So it gets oh, people wonderful. off the paths, into the woods, and thinking about it. Now, how do you find the artist to do that? Because it, now that wouldn't be considered ephemeral art, right? Well, they're installation artists, they're the way we think of it. Right. Um, so are they local artists? Or are they artists from all around? They're from all across the country. We started doing this with local contemporary artists, and the word went forth. Oh, Because it's juried, and so we just put uh, an RFP out for um, contemporary artists who might want to work on these installations and we get all kinds of submissions from all across the country. Oh, that's wonderful. And we give them a stipend for their materials sure. and they come and uh, we show them the spot that we'd like them to yeah. work in and we install these things and they're wonderful. So that's opening in June and uh, the artists will be around for the well, time. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting because the last exhibit you had, which were the little how the outdoor houses. Yes, the, the Secret the, Shelters. Se that's what it was, Secret Shelters. Uh, Tessa Diagostino, who is from the Cape, yes. from the area here, and who does a lot of that kind of work, um, she had one here, and I was just so surprised that you actually used a local artist to do these things. And there's so much talent, and yeah. we do these every year, so if there are local artists who are interested, I would urge them to be in touch with us because we're, we're right now putting out our call for next year. Yeah. Uh, so we want people to uh, apply and to show us what kind of work they'd like to do because we think of it as a 100-acre canvas, and it's really great for an artist. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Now, you still have the preschool going, right? We do, the 100 acres school yeah. is getting ready for its summer program. We oh, still wonderful. have some slots left yeah. and we're um, encouraging parents to come and uh, look for next year, for the uh -huh. next year's school year. Excellent. Um, our head of school, Melissa Russell, was just named STEM Educator of the Year Wow! Uh, by the Boston chapter of the, I'm going to get the acronym wrong, but it's the group that accredits um, early education. Oh, so wonderful. we're really so proud of her and the work that the teachers are incredibly creative. That's and wonderful. to see a four-year-old talk about their hypothesis. <laughs> <laughs> it's really wonderful. So oh, they're learning terrific. and Good uh, for you. we that's just wonderful. got, um, well, a while ago we got the first year's um, evaluations back. Mm -hmm. Our kids are evaluated against all kids nationally, mm -hmm. which is, is done in all preschools. And our children just outstrip the national Oh, norms. that's wonderful. Um, that's So great. we think it's working. And sure. we're really proud of that. Oh, that's it. terrific. Now you still have the zip line. We do. The Adventure Park at Heritage I know is the open. Adventure Park. And I just want to go on record. I want to tell everybody right now that my husband and I last weekend 
We're just taking a, you know, a drive. We were taking a drive. He yeah. runs, run, he's a runner. Eh. Yeah. But <laughs> who would do that? I don't know. Um, but we were just taking a drive and we drove around the, I call it the Raiders of the Lost Ark because it's so bumpy sometimes. Yes, it's yes, nice. Yes. It's good right now as long as we don't have a lot of rain. Yeah. yeah. So around past it and Joe said, will you stop? And uh, it was kind of cool. So we had the, yeah. we, I have a driving convertible, so we had the top up. Put the windows down. And he goes, do you hear anything? And I said, no, I don't hear a thing. And then he goes, wait, I heard something. I heard zip, that zzz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was it. We didn't hear anything. There wasn't anybody screaming. There was nobody jumping up and down. It was fabulous. Well, and I can't wait till my grandsons come visit and they can come. That's what we hear is intergenerational groups. We, we have a lot of families where three generations, the, the child, the parents, and the grandparents sure. are all up in the trees together. And it's, it helps you test yourself, you know, in, in this world. Well, I did it last year, so trust me, talk about tests. Yeah, you know, <laughs> think you can do something and yeah, it's a wonderful it feeling. Yeah. Uh, and we pair it uh, for a lot of school groups with mm -hmm. um, hour-long programs that they do oh, about plants. Great. They learn math, they learn leadership skills. We're having sure. a big group that's coming soon to do a leadership academy with us and oh, to go up wonderful. in the trees for graduating wonderful. seniors. It's a great um, thing that, that brings people wonderful. and families together. So, Well, I just want to dispel the fact that it was noisy because it wasn't noisy. <laughs> no, you have to concentrate on what you're doing. Yeah, you know? well, that's what I, I was saying that to my husband. He goes, you did this, right? He goes, I can't believe you did this. And I said, yeah. And I said, you know what? You don't have time to talk. You don't have time. All you're thinking about is getting from point A to point B, mm -hmm. and, you, and it's very safe. I mean, obviously yeah. they have you on a harness and all that, but you don't want to be the one who falls off and is dangling. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> that's all you're thinking about is getting from point A to point B. Where's my foot and, go next? Where yeah. does my foot go next? And, and um, yeah, the concentration, um, the, the, just the feeling that you're right of accomplishment. I just, I think it's fabulous and congratulations for Thank making you. such Thank a success. You. We're it's so terrific. glad that people are responding so positively. Oh, yeah. And for yeah. people like me who are not so happy about heights. Yeah, I'm not um, either. We've got a, that quarter mile trail on the ground. That's which is wonderful. Too, which is fun. Yeah. We just put in new, uh, we were experimenting with how you can hear the forest and we just put in these new megaphones that you put on your ears. And so you can hear the birds, you can hear the wow. wind. Wow, so it magnifies it? it. Oh, yeah. wow. So it's sort of fun to hear, yeah. the, hear the sounds of the forest, too. So Heritage is open daily, right? Now? We are. We are open from 9 to 5 every day. Mm -hmm. um, we are have some great days coming up for sandwich residents, but mm -hmm. it's free for sandwich residents. Oh, and you can look on our website and yeah. uh, check out those days. Come bring a picnic. Come for the sure. whole day and a sure. lot of special events days. Now, they used to do some concerts here. Are you going to do things like that this year or not this year? Well, we have concerts related to Family Fun Fridays. Oh, Every wonderful. Every Family Fun Friday, oh, we have a, a family friendly performer. Oh, wonderful. And, and all of those are, are oh, great. with music. You know, a lot of people have told us, I'm glad you brought that up over the years about, you know, we wish you did music again. Um, but we found that folks want it but didn't show up. Yeah, no, that's just it. <laughs> so, so we weren't yeah, able to, tickets. you know, the performers feel badly if right. there's not that many people that, right. are, that are coming to see things. Right, so and it's costly too. So. It may be something we try again in the future, yeah. but, but we've tried our best and they haven't worked as, as sure. well as sure. we would like. So let's go back to this. Sure. It is, again, such a beautiful exhibit and it's called? Cut, Costume in the Cinema. Cut. Costume like in the cut. cinema. Cut. I got it. And um, you have a lot of women's wear here, or yes. w women's costumes, but you also have some men's costumes. And mm -hmm. one of the men's costumes you have is that very famous, very good looking young man, although he's not that young, um, Johnny Depp. Yes. <gasps> we have his Pirates of the Caribbean outfit from the second film. And he is right now. Um, they're in post-production on the fifth film, which right. is going to open next year, which I'm very excited about. Uh, you and me both. So, and uh, you have another costume of his from, uh, didn't you, do you have the Scarlet Pimpernel? Pimp we have one that was Keith Ledger's. Oh, it's Keith Ledger's. And Keith Ledger's. Uh, from Casanova. Casanova, that was and it. And if I'm there sorry. were ever two very different things, you know, Johnny Depp's is kind of filthy and... <laughs> Piratey, you know, yes, it and is. Casanova's is this beautiful thing with gold threads right. and lace sleeves, and right. we've got him set up by a mirror because you have oh, to see yeah. the back of this coat to believe it. Oh, so we call wonderful. that our bad boy corner. <laughs> <laughs> we Who have else all our is bad there? Boys. Um, trying to, we have a third outfit that's from um, 
uh, Colin Farrell oh. from um, The New World. Oh, I love Colin. So, I love Colin Farrell and too. And we've got um, the Sherlock Holmes oh, duo. Really? Oh, we wonderful. We have um, Jude Law and Robert Downey Jr.'s oh. stuff. There's, there's an another pair that are just scrumptious. Incredible. And there's a great story about Robert Downey Jr. liked to carry a lot of stuff mm -hmm. while he was acting. So they opened his coat and they made special pockets in the costume just for him that, that didn't change the look of it, but where he could carry good all luck. the little things that he wanted good to carry symbols? with him. Good luck symbols? Good luck charms? I don't know. Stuff. Yeah, just stuff. Stuff that he wanted to have while he was oh, working. Oh, that's funny. So all of these things have the actor's personality. And then, of course, Daniel Craig, we have not one but two um, oh. of his things mm -hmm. um, from uh, the movie Defiance about the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And they were to show how um, costumes are distressed over time because the movie takes place over, you know, a, right. a number of, of months. And so the same leather coat that he wears in the beginning and then later in the movie, so it's more and more distressed as they're mm -hmm. out in the woods and so forth. So when you think about what goes into a Hollywood production where you, know, right. you might make eight or nine of exactly the same thing and it has right. to look exactly the same or you're going Certainly. to pick it up. Certainly. It's incredible to me what goes into these films. Well, it's always kind of it's kind of funny too. I think it was uh, Downton Abbey. They had a um, it was on YouTube and they had put on a they had had done a scene and they didn't realize a water bottle had been left in it. Oh no. On the mantle. And oh, you know the no. big mantle in the yes. in the study. Yeah. You know and um, I can't think of his name, but he was standing, you know, the, the Lord was standing next to it, and nobody realized, and somebody, you know, and there was, it was there, yeah. and it became this, you know, so I'm sure costumes are the same way. They can't leave a tag mm -hmm. uh, made in mm -hmm. China. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And these yeah. aren't, these are all handmade, aren't they? They are, they are. Amazing. There's one, the ones from Goya's Ghost, uh, Natalie Portman wore one, mm -hmm. and Randy Quaid wore the other. The buttons on them are embroidered, and there's one man in Austria, apparently, the woman who came with the exhibit and helped us set it up said um, that he makes these buttons for Hollywood. So each of these is handmade. Wow. And the men and the woman's costumes kind of relate to each other. So the flower that's in the intricate flower in the middle of this button that, that's a beautiful piece of embroidery and each one is hand done on fabric. So it's like a tiny little embroidery sample and then made into a button for oh, each of these things. Amazing. And there's you know a lot of buttons on this thing. So how many pieces in all again? There are 43 costumes. 43 costumes, wow. And, uh, and from how many, from 43 different movies or more than that, no, I would think? Um, you stumped me there. Okay. I, I was just wondering because, you know, we're sitting here by Phantom of the Opera and there are two costumes here. Sure. But I'm sure you've Must got others. About 30 movies, roughly. Right. Represented. Okay, right. And you have a, a handout that you can take home with That's you right. and go back and watch all the movies, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> and see this, you know, think about the stars. We have pictures of the stars before and after. Uh huh. Um, so you see um, Kira Knightley looking like a regular person in right. her Duchess getup, yeah. um, which is kind of interesting. And yeah. there's additional information. Information. Um, there's a great Amy Adams cos costume in here. There's a uh, one that Natasha Richardson wore mm. that is just gorgeous. It's one beautiful long piece of satin, and the way it's cut, uh, there's nothing to it. You know, there's yeah, two pieces course. put right. together. That's all it is. So it, it's a virtuosic piece of cutting because you had to get the fabric to flow right. right. So you had to kind of work out the and geometry. It, and satin, you said. Yes, it's it's magnificent. It's this green uh, satin thing that oh. just drapes perfectly. So puts all of us in kind of a movie mood here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would imagine it does. So so this summer you're going to do a lot of things around the movies. That's right. Um, we have natural threads. We have some new cars too. Really? We, I didn't ask about that. Yes. Oh my gosh, I forgot. We have been hunting for two years for a cord. Oh sure, we I had know a cord. cord in the collection, right. and it wasn't a great example. So uh, we were looking for another. We sold that one, and we've been looking for another one. And we found one this year. It's a 1936 cord, and oh. it's maroon and sexy and sleek. Oh, nice! So, so is it a, like a centerpiece for the exhibit? It is, uh, and it's a fun car because it was one of the first that has those pop-up headlights. Oh yeah, that was the first yeah. car to do it. But unlike today, where you know it does it automatically, you right. have to hand crank. <laughs> 
on both <laughs> sides to get the things to go up and the things yeah, to go right. down. So it's sort of fun to yeah. see that that kind of engineering. And our beloved Model T has been out for makeover. It's oh. been at the car spa all winter, <laughs> yeah. and uh, it's got new upholstery and some oh, new features. Nice. So it's it's ready for everybody to go climb in it and and take oh, that's pictures. Great. We also have a 1934 Darby Bentley. Oh. Uh, that's on loan in our collector's corner area. Mm -hmm. And that's reminiscent of a lot of these costume dramas, which is why mm -hmm. we, we have it in a 1955 MG um, TF, which has also been in some movies. Oh, so neat. that's kind of fun to see. That sounds wonderful. And on the walls in there, uh, we have the art of a gentleman named Stephen Blythe, who uh, by day is the manager of Harvard's endowment. And by night, he makes maps from license plates Oh my gosh. But because he is a mathematician, he also right. teaches math at Harvard, um, the maps tell a story. So one of them, for instance, he took education levels across the country and put them against the size of states. So Massachusetts has the highest level of educational attainment. So the Massachusetts license plate depicts the state of Texas, which is the largest in land area. <laughs> and so forth through you know I got all you. through the states. So it's kind of weird. So all of the, the a lot of the southern states uh, that have low educational attainment mm -hmm. are the small New England states. So I think we're like Alabama or Mississippi. Oh, so it's sort of a really interesting. So thing you really have to think. think when you look at it. Yeah, and we have yeah. um, his legends of of how he did it. But each one of these maps has some kind of odd um, mathematical twist, or his mm -hmm. um, he's English. So his map of England uh, uses <laughs> the old historic counties in each one is pun. Oh my gosh. So they're really a lot of fun. Oh, it sounds like it. So it all of those like are it. on the walls and they're nice and bright and colorful. Oh, that's great. And you have a, uh, weddings here too, don't you? We are. We have 20 weddings this summer. Excellent. That's wonderful. Yeah. And uh, you're having the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce annual meeting here next we week. We are. We are so honored to welcome them. Uh, It'll that be, would fun. be a great And event. you're going on the board of directors with me. I am. Yay, I'm yay. Looking forward to working It'll with you. It'll be lots of fun. Yes. yes. You'll have to come on my committee. I'm chairman of Mem uh, going to be chairman of membership. So. Oh, how terrific. Don't mind us. We're just talking. <laughs> we're getting some work done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, anyway, well, this is unbelievable. It's, it's fascinating. It's colorful. It's fun. And then with everything else you have lined up for the summer, it's just going to be an outstanding, outstanding season we for you. We think so. It's going to be fun. And in the gardens, I'm, oh, didn't mention. Uh, Wait a minute. When's rhododendrons? When are rhododendrons they coming out? are coming uh, around Memorial Day. Yeah, they're a little late this year, right? No. No, is that always it's Memorial Day? It's always around Day? Memorial Day. Okay, and oh, hydrangeas okay. in July. We're going to be part of the hydrangea festival oh, across yeah, the Cape. Oh, that's, yeah, that's Cape Cod Chamber. And we are now the North American hydrangea test garden. All the major growers wow. in the country have decided they're going to give us their plants to test before they're ready in home gardens. Oh, so fabulous. you're going to see things here that won't be available at your local plant store for, for a, a few years. Yeah. So our interns are going to document how they grow, how they do as they experiment with right. these new varieties. Right. So you're going to see a much expanded oh, garden. Terrific. We have a beautiful fountain and path, a new oh. staircase up from the great lawn. So, so what you're telling me is that if you don't have a family membership here, you better come and get one quick. <laughs> we think it's a good idea. Yeah. We think well, it's a good idea. I mean, when Excuse you me. when you <coughs> when you compare costs, it, it absolutely is. It, it is. Makes if, sense. If it's you economical. Come a couple of times for the family of four, right. you'll you'll make money. You'll be ahead. And and look how, you know, other people come here and they're so in awe of what's here. And then the local people who live here sometimes don't even come. So if you live in Sandwich and you've never been to Heritage, shame on you. But you can correct that really quick by just coming, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Coming in and seeing this lovely, wonderful exhibit. So all I can say is, if you don't have your membership, shame on you. Get it soon. Get it now. Come to this wonderful exhibit. Thank you. I can't thank you enough for, for letting us come in and take a sneak peek. And we're going we're gonna to just see this on the air and people are just going to flock here even more than they already oh, I are. I hope so. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your coming to see everything. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. Thank you for joining us. And Ellen, thank you. Thank you so much. All righty. Wasn't Ellen Spear fantastic? I want to thank her so much for allowing us to see Cut, all about costumes and all about the movies. It is a fantastic exhibit. And she told us all what was going on this season at Heritage Museums and Gardens. 
there's zip lines, there's walking in the woods, there's beautiful rhododendron, there are hydrangeas, there's everything you want to know and special exhibits beyond belief. So if I were you, I would find my way to Heritage Museums and Gardens. I want to thank you for joining me today and I'll look for you next time on another Cape Conversations.